Hi. Welcome to the Golden Vice. I'm Sean. Today we're going to be tying a parachute dry fly. It's a pretty simple fly. We'll be tying it on a size 14 hook. I normally tie this on a size 16 or even a size 18, but it's a little bit easier to see for you if I use, if I tie it on a size 14. Uh, it's a very simple fly. It's got a hackle tail, uh, turkey biop body, uh, grizzly hackle, and just a little bit of peacock flash dubbing just to give it a little bit of a flash. And I tied this in black, white, natural, olive, brown, biots. So you can tie it in any color you want. Definitely a real match the hatch opportunity. All right, we're gonna want the tail to basically be hook length along yeah that looks fine and as usual I always try to pull that tail up so that I get get it tied on the top of the hook as much as possible and then get it all the way to the bend I'll try one more and then I try to get one turn of thread around underneath the tail just to prop it up just a hair all right now normally I would tie the wing in now but not this time and the reason is because these turkey biots are a little bit tricky to tie in up around a wing so I'm just going to tie in my wing after I've got the biot tied in and I'll be using a brown biot like I said I've tied this with four different colors at least and I do want the fuzz ridge to show so that means I'm going to be tying this in with that notch pointing down Okay, and keep your thread as flat as you can so that you can get this biot to be as natural as possible. Now I am going to put just a drop of super glue on these threads. And then spread that around. Now the reason I'm tied so many of these flies with these turkey biots is because I kind of got away from fly tying for way too long.
And when I got back in, I mean, that, when I was tying flies before, we we didn't tie. I mean, I don't remember turkey buyouts really being a material that we we ever really used. And so I just really kind of got introduced to turkey buyouts this year. And I love them. I just absolutely love the the look you get for a segmented body with these things. But as I said, they can be a little bit of a pain to get tied in up around your wing because they're so wide getting your thread around it can create lumps. I took out a little bit of one there but I think I can take care of it. So now that's a smooth body right up to where the wing is going to be. Now the wing is going to be made out of this Antron fiber, which is very similar to poly fiber. And the way I tie these in is I wrap around the thread and then I can pull that up and kind of position it wherever I want it to be and then do a couple of thread wraps in front and a couple behind then one more through the middle And now I can start making that into a post. And if you're going to want to tie parachute dry flies, this is a skill you're going to have to develop. And really the only thing I can tell you is, is that you're just going to have to learn how to put just enough pressure to get that thread around the hook without having so much pressure that it messes it all up. All right, now once I have it basically made, what I do is I go around the hook behind it, make a U back, back around, go back around the hook the other way, and make another U the other way and then that gives me a kind of a double grip on that post so that it stays as straight up as I can get it. All right now I'm going to use a size 16 hackle feather on this because I just like my hackle to be a little bit smaller and what I do is I kind of tie in the hackle just about like you would normally for a traditional fly and then I'll angle it up and what I want to do is I want to get that hackle to hug the post and by hug the post I mean I want that feather the concave side of that feather to be right up against the post like it's hugging it which is why I call it hugging the post and then that way I can fold that heather heather I can fold that feather straight down and then the 
concave side will be pointing straight up and then that way it'll tie in that way. It makes it a little bit easier to tie it in and do your whip finish. All right, now I want to put some just a little bit of shiny sparkly dubbing on here just a bit. want to have the tightest noodle I can get. This stuff isn't the easiest dubbing to make noodles from. It tends to want to break away from your hook. I always end up having to Trim a little bit of this away. But that'll be fine. Be a little bit buggy. Alright, now I'm going to reposition this to make it a little bit easier to do this hackle. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is get your thread out of the way and then bend that feather, get that concave side up. And then you just want to do tight wraps right up against each other. Probably ought to use a Hackle plier. Okay, I want usually to have at least four or five. Every now and then I can get six turns. All right. And now to do, to tie this in, you kind of do a little weave motion to so weave around that head. So you get three wraps around and then you can cut that out. Now all that's left is the whip finish and some trimming and cleanup. Now the whip finish, you're going to want to do the same thing. You're going to want to weave it around and snug it up. And then I always want to put a good bit of head cement right where I did that whip finish and then just a little bit right at the top of the post. All right, then we'll just position it back in here just to make it a little bit easier to finish this thing up. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim this, this, the post, and I always say Cut it a little higher than you think you want to because <laughs> you can always cut more. All right, now we just got to look for all the cleanup that we need. 
this this dubbing is not the easiest to work with I mean now you can leave it as buggy as you want and that's that's pretty buggy it's got a nice round hackle I like the hackle to go right to the end of the tail and that's that's pretty close got a nice spread of the tail really nice tapered body and one of the things I like about doing the parachute whip finish this way is that I don't get anything up around the eye so the eye stays completely clear all right well I think that's going to do it for this one if you like this please subscribe and like my channel and tell people about it um, my last video did pretty well so I'm hoping that that means I'm getting better at this and that these are videos that people appreciate uh, subscribe and I'll do more Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.